Hi Naps, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be doing some makeup, so I got my bare face. I even, even put in contact lenses just for you. So today, we're gonna talk about some things while we do some makeup. We're going to be talking today about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and self-determination theory. And because it changes how we frame our mindset about our abilities during quarantine, we are going to frame our eyes to match. So we're gonna do some statement liner. Hopefully it turns out okay. Let's see. All right, here we go. First things first. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is pretty well known. I think most psychology classes, education theory classes, talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Did I get tan? How did I get... So, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is all about needs that are necessary for humans in order to get motivated, stay motivated, and continue being motivated throughout their lives. Maslow hypothesized basically that our motivations weren't animalistic in nature once they got past a certain level of security. The first round were our basics, just like the basic foundation I am putting on my face. Our tier one is physiological needs. Physiological needs are things like food, water, warmth, and rest. Without these base things, Maslow hypothesized could not move to higher tier items of motivation. If you're hungry, you can't think about anything else except for your hunger. Now, while all of these are very important external factors into living or dying, some of you may know that when you're hungry doesn't necessarily stop you from doing a project. And maybe it's the difference between hunger and starvation, but as a base level, you would think it would be hunger in any form would um, change your motivation. Already, we see that this theory may not be entirely true. So this brings us to our second tier. And just like our second tier, we gonna need some contour, because that is basically second tier of makeup right there. Ooh, I'ma look so snatched from a Zoom meeting later. We wanna contour out our faces. All the materials I use, by the way, are going to be linked down below in the description. Once we get past our physiological needs, we get into our second tier, which would be safety. Safety is considered second tier because if you have to steal food in order to fulfill your hunger, that's not necessarily putting you in a particularly safe location. At least that's the only logic that I can think of as to why safety is in second tier and not first tier. Um, so safety tier includes security and safety. So feeling comfortable and able to kind of expand from there while still meeting your tier one requirements. If you're not safe, I don't know that you can concentrate on getting things like food and water and rest. Like I would assume that rest should be in that second tier almost because sleeping in areas that are unsafe are not gonna give you the best quality of sleep. And I mean, this is predicated upon the idea that all of his needs stack on the other. So you don't hit the next one until you fulfill the first one. You need all of these things in order to survive and thrive in your environment. Now that I've got my blush on, now that I've got my contour on, and now that I look really basic, I guess, we get to move on to Tia three. I'm gonna do some highlight because honestly, I think from here on up to the rest of the Maslow tiers, they get much more positive and much more glowy, I guess. They make you feel good. So the next three tiers kind of focus on mental health and I think highlighting the good things is kind of a way that we can do that. So I'm gonna be using my Aurora Lights palette because you know I love to use it as a highlight because it's so pretty. I think I'm gonna use sparkling, shade sparkling. Kind of a pretty like peachy shade right there it's got a pretty little finish and it's also slightly warm because our tier three the warm and fuzzies belongingness and love needs so tier three is all about your social life it is about making sure that your intimate relationships are being built it is about making sure that your friends are being taken care of it's about making sure that you have friends to take care of 
It's really working on who you are as a person and how you interact with other people. Now, some of us know that when we have good friends, they can fulfill that safety thing as well. Like, we might not feel safe in our environment, but we know if we go to, over to a friend's house that they also fulfill that safety. Sorry, I'm making my Cupid's bow really shiny. I'm gonna look like a glowing dinosaur. It's gonna be great. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what I mean. I didn't drop anything. And then we get into our self-esteem needs, which is, I think, interesting as we need to love others. And then it's almost saying that you need to love others before you love yourself. This list is all basically external. The idea behind esteem or tier four was about prestige and feeling accomplishment. It's mostly like saying the outside perspective is more important than the inside perspective. And our last tier in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, before we get into kind of more detail oriented and we switch gears a little bit, is self-actualization. The self-actualization tier is all about achieving your full potential and it includes creative activities, which I don't necessarily agree with that being the last tier because I think creative activities are how a lot of people cope with some of those other options not being as fulfilling. I think of this maybe less as like a pyramid building off of one another. I think it's more like these are all important external factors that should be hit on. Like the food pyramid. The food pyramid got redistributed from being like this to being like that. I think that's how Maslow's hierarchy should really actually be redistributed. But I'm not Maslow. I'm not a psychologist. And always, as always, I am not a professional. Hi. Hi. Every time. Okay. So now we're getting into our competing idea here, which is the self-determination theory. Self-determination theory is much more internal than Maslow's theory is. I think it's a good thing because I think it complements the theory a little bit more. And although many people, I think, argue that it is completely countering his theory, I think that they actually mesh really well together. The way I see it, Maslow's was so external, it really missed a lot of internal motivation that I think we as humans face on a day-to-day -day basis. Statement liner time. Ugh, okay, I have been mildly dreading doing statement liner. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna be using my Clinique Pretty Easy liquid eyelining pen and crossing my fingers that it works. Should we get in here? Ooh. There we go. So I like to think that this theory is all about growth. Oh, I shouldn't be doing eyeliner, I should be doing shadow. Pretend I didn't start to line that. Okay. So we're doing a statement liner and I know that I want the liner to be the main focus mostly. So I'll probably do a pretty neutral top part of the eye and then I'm gonna do some fun color I think with the statement liner on the bottom portion. I have hooded eyes, so if I do statement liner up top, I really have to get it very close to my eyebrow in order for it to appear. So I'm using Jeffree Star's Mini Controversy palette today because it's got Diet Root Beer and Cry On My Couch, which are just so neutral and it's great. I'm gonna start with Cry On My Couch and just kind of... Okay, I'm gonna take some Diet Root Beer Plop it on there. Both of these are matte colors, so I'm not really getting any extra shine from them. I might go back in later and pop on a little bit of shine once I kind of know what I'm doing with my statement liner a little bit more so I can emphasize it. Ooh, I might even want to pop some more in that crease since I know I'm going to keep it fairly simple on top. Ooh, I really like. Okay, when I said cry on my couch was going on my eye, I meant mostly diet root beer. But that's how it happens sometimes. Makeup goes a little crazy. And it, uh, oh, I forgot to put cry on my couch on there. Okay, we're doing our best today. We are gonna go into self-determination theory. Our first category for self-determination theory, there's three and they are all um, equally as important, is autonomy. Autonomy is the need to perceive choices. So us as human beings, we need to feel like we have choices. I'm gonna start out with a basic wing. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to end up making it really big on the bottom and I'm gonna try and cut it a little bit and then leave some room to fill in with color and then maybe add some fun lines on the outside. So just so you know, that's, that's the goal. 
So along with autonomy and the need to perceive choices, they need to believe that their life is their decision. So the choices need to not be forced. They need to be actual legitimate choices. It can't be like, do the thing you want to do, but that'll be a ton of punishment for you. Or you can do the thing I want you to do. That you as the individual, in order to kind of have that life as your decision, need to be in control of your own actions. Not being controlled by somebody else, not being manipulated by somebody else into doing that. In the workplace, this can be really difficult. Are they twins? No. Are they sisters? Maybe. So anyway, that can be kind of difficult to achieve in the workplace um, as an employer has to get certain tasks done. But maybe your lunch break can be a little bit more employee choice, or maybe what work you get done can be employee choice. Give them options for what they wanna do that day. And not basically, not micromanaging. We all agree micromanaging is a pain in the butt as an, as an employee. I'm gonna add a little point because I don't know, it looks cute. Don't judge. Actually, I do know why, because it's statement liner and it's supposed to be a little crazy. So there. Ways to build autonomy um, in your life or for somebody else, because a lot of these are you gifting this to other people. This is stuff that a lot of external factors control, but they're not like you getting something easily from external factors. People have to kind of gift this to you in a way. So in order to build autonomy, you have to Frame goals and timelines as essential info to assure a person's success instead of your timelines basically just being used as a way to check mark people and see if they're actually doing the work that you need them to do. It's directly related to their success. It gives them the best opportunity to succeed and it's very clear to them that it is for their benefit that they meet these goals. Another way to build autonomy and a place is to not use competitive incentives. When I say don't use competitive incentives, your incentives are in direct competition with somebody else. People have a hard time understanding a prize versus understanding a meaningful opportunity out of competition. You may think you're getting your best out of it, but they're looking for the end goal and not necessarily the means of how they get there in order to achieve that goal. And then the third way to kind of boost that is making sure that you don't have a pressure to perform. This can be really difficult to achieve. Pressure is everywhere, it is not something that we can always control. We might be able to at least be more open about them ahead of time so that people know about them. We might be able to reduce the type of pressure we put on people. Framing goals as like pertinent to your success will give them positive motivation to get through it without like the negative consequence aspect of it. As I talked about in my previous video linked up there, we want to have a positive outlook on how we do things. So we want to keep things positive reward system rather than punishment withdrawal, taking away stuff from people. Uh, people tend to operate better under those circumstances. I always think of statement liner as like taking advantage of the negative space as well as like the lines that you actually create with your liner. Oh, the hooded eye problem where no matter how straight it looks when you raise your eye, as soon as you drop it, <laughs> it just smiley faces. Now we get to see if I can do that on the other side. <laughs> ah, statement liner. <laughs> so let's go into the second section of self-determination theory. So the second one is the relatedness. This is social relations. So similar to, what was it, tier three? No, yeah, similar to tier three of Maslow's hierarchy, but a little bit different at the same time. Relatedness, this tier, takes into consideration both the external value and the internal value we get from those uh, relationships with others. So it is defined with the need to care and be cared about by others. We want to be able to care for someone else and we want to also be able to be cared about by someone. This involves creating stronger bonds with them without ulterior motives. Ulterior motives is really important with this because so much of our life can be defined as a transactional relationship with somebody else. You do something for me, I'll do something for you. And it creates a really shallow relationship where you feel like you can't trust the person to just do the right thing without them getting something in return. You need to deepen those relationships, validate your emotional exploration. So ask people how they're doing, genuinely be curious about it, listen to them, 
This goes into a couple other videos that I've done as well. If you just want to like click through that playlist right there, go ahead and peruse it. But without the open communication of feelings involved in the section, you can't really deepen your connection with other humans. You also need to facilitate value development. What does that even mean? That you need to be able to align your values and goals with the work that you're doing and you need a path forward to that. And you need to know what that is. And then your work needs to connect to a noble purpose. This is hard because there are a lot of jobs that are very important, very important to have done that maybe feel like they don't have a noble purpose. If you're serving fast food to somebody, you're not exactly saving starving kids in Africa but you could be helping somebody who really is in a food desert who needs food. You could be aiding somebody and helping them get out of their mental health cycle that they have going on right now. Maybe they're depressed and this is the first time they've gotten out of the house. If you can find a way to make sure that the work you're doing can be framed in a positive, socially good way, you'll be one step closer to relating to that person and increasing your social good in your workplace, making you feel better as well. Whenever you're working with Statement Liner, always keep in mind that you can always go back in with concealer and touch up the spots that maybe aren't quite as even as you want to be. So don't get frustrated with yourself if you're like, oh, this line is like just a little too thick because you can go in and you can kind of cut it out a little bit. You can take up some makeup remover though you have to be careful with it because you're gonna take away your base as well as your top. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. So this is what I have for that. It's, it's mostly even. I had to go back and touch this up a little tiny bit since I kind of connected my dot instead of leaving it blank. Happy mistakes, right? Bob Ross would say something like, embrace happy little accidents. So now we're going to go into our last tier of self-determination theory. So the last tier is competence. Competence is the need to feel effective at meeting day-to-day -day challenges. It's growth over time and it's leaders who can rekindle the desire to grow and learn in others feeling like you're adequate in your job and then being pushed to become more than adequate and feeling like you're meeting those goals to getting better. Having those mile markers that you're able to say, I wasn't able to do that, but now I'm able to do this is really important. So in order to develop confidence, we need to make learning resources available. That means training people. That means investing time and money to make sure that other people are able to learn and grow. And you want to also set learning goals when you're doing this. So you don't want a fixed result. You don't want to just take a test at the end and be done with it. You want to be able to apply it to learn and grow. So this is really, most of this is just interpersonal relationships with people. All, all of these are equal in building a happy, healthy you. Now I've got my statement liner on. And I said I was going to do some fancy eye stuff. So I am, but I'm gonna do it off camera. So I will show you the final result in a minute. So let's check it out after I've got some more uh, sparkle and shine on it. All right guys, here is the finished look. I added a little bit of black to my waterline, put on some mascara as well as did some more eye colors. So let's walk you through what those eye colors are so that you can do this at home if you want. First thing I did was I took my Aurora Lights palette and I kind of added some color in my like secondary inner corner, my inner corner, my brow bone, uh, and I kind of took some silver right there. So that would be shade flashing, that bad boy. I took that, kind of went a little bit out with it. Uh, it makes it look a little sharper than it is and I didn't have to clean it up. Um, sparkling, I took that over my brow bone and put it in my like secondary inner corner, not quite all the way inner corner with that one. And then I took shade ombre and stuck it on my direct inner corner there. That way it would give it a little bit more depth. Um, along with that top, I darkened up my crease area, but just on my outer corner because I have hooded eyes and it doesn't always want to work super well. I took a shade 10% off right, right there in the James Morphe palette, kind of darkened up that outer crease area. And then I used the two blue shades right here, Playground for this area, and Hello for this area right in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to try and do some more makeup videos on my channel, and also I'm going to continue talking about uh, philosophy, psychology, mental health, whatever you guys want me to talk about. Um, go ahead and drop it in the comments if there are any ideas that you have for either makeup things that you would like me to do, 
or subjects you want me to talk about. I think blending both is really important because you get that lovely artistic outlet, but you also get to learn something fun. And at the end of the day, I think it is really important to make sure that all your needs are fulfilled and your motivation is high. Be patient with yourself during this time if your motivation isn't so high. A lot of those needs, whether they're Maslow or self-determination theory needs, your needs right now are a little bit in flux. So give yourself some patience if you're not doing everything that you wanted to do right now, or if your motivation's a little lacking because a lot of the needs that were stable are all of a sudden not stable and it's okay to be struggling a bit. So go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Uh, hit the subscribe button right there. Yep. And uh, yeah, ding the bell for notifications. I look forward to seeing you soon. I have no lip on. Ah, this video is about statement liner anyway. It's fine. I'll put a lip on for my Zoom meeting. But you guys just pretend I'm wearing a mask. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you here next Thursday. Have a good day, naps. Bye.